Welcome, it's Jimmy Chang here for yet another vlog. Yes, a vlog that's done at home. I have been spending some time testing and evaluating the new M1X firmware 2.0. Don't worry, you're gonna see that video very soon. But let me spend some quality time with you and talk about the camera industry and Olympus. Well, you've seen the title, I'm calling Olympus the slow cooker. My analogy for Olympus is pretty much how I feel personally about the general reaction from you. Yes, well, most of you. For those who remember Olympus as a camera company who popularized photography for the masses and made photography affordable with the capable half-frame pen cameras, and for those who appreciate the quality of Olympus lenses, you will appreciate their effort whenever they release something new. I'm not saying those nuts who jump up and down and scream about any new Olympus camera or lens release. Well, kind of, yeah, I kind of did actually for the new 150 to 400 Pro, but, but yeah, any, that, that's an exception. I'm talking about the emotion that you feel about why Olympus did what they did and released what they released in the way they did it. Too many of us, especially photographers who are too young to remember the golden era of photography, Digital cameras are spoiling us left, right and center. The photographic industry has turned into a computer industry, race for bigger numbers, faster speed and endless new computational features. And don't get me wrong, they are cool. Very cool indeed. It's almost like processed food these days. Photographers who want explosive first impression from anything new, it has to arrive with a bang. Something that, well, not for the sake of photography, but rather for its intended audience to talk to others about, about how cool and special this new thing is. Like fast food that deliver the instant taste, all prepped up so you can awe and wow without even being in your mouth. I know it's about first impression, but like processed food or even fast food, that taste will soon wear out. Things become bland and boring. And what happened? They forget and wait for the next new thing. And this is a cycle, a pattern, a rather repetitive pattern that I see over the last few years. Camera manufacturers try very hard to please photographers these days, keep upping the numbers, pixels, and even aperture sizes so they get something to talk about, rather than appreciating and learn how to use them in the first place, creating a false impression that without their latest gear, you simply cannot compete in the photographic world successfully. And that's total bollocks. I personally think that manufacturers are digging holes themselves and it's now so deep that they found themselves inside and hard to get out. You see, photographers now are complaining new products aren't exciting enough, not revolutionary, not good enough. See, this is wrong. How many new things do a genuine photographer really need? I say it again, needs and not wants. I want a lot of things, but when it comes down to business, I do my usual things. You know, assess the scene I'm looking at, set my exposure, compose and execute. Don't get me wrong though, features are cool. They help photographers get things done, but it's only effective and be appreciated if they know how to use them. So why would I say that Olympus is a slow cooker? Well, Olympus is in some ways like Apple in the computer industry. They never really bother about the outside world too much or wanted to be bothered they think about what photographer needs rather than want. Of course, you can draw your own conclusion on whether this is a good practice for business. But as a photographer, I couldn't agree more. Every new camera should be designed for photographers, not for tech reviewers. It's a discipline thing. Well, to some degree, a budget thing. But while others are going for megapixel race, Olympus sticks with their 20 megapixel sensor because it's more than enough for most. 
And before you jump to end my remark, I did say most. While a more modern 20 megapixel sensor may boost someone's confidence, but for those who complain that their current sensor is insufficient, it's downright wrong. I've been using this sensor to deliver all my professional jobs, both stills and videos, and never get one complaint. Photographer is about the end results, how your finished image looks like digitally on screen or on paper. For that, Olympus delivers what we need. Even features that make Olympus known are actually useful stuff. Lifetime, Line Composite, Pro Capture, even the latest Starry Sky AF are very specific, and they're designed for that very specific group of photographers. And all because Olympus didn't join the once race. Because of that, people often overlook what's on the table. Outside of the Olympus world, not a single person I spoke to knew any of the features I just mentioned. And that's enough said. But when I showed them, after a couple of photos later, they were all in awe and realized just how good they were. It's like a tasteful dish that you may not know until it's in your mouth. A true case study is the now famous and iconic Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. I've told you a million times that just how good a camera it is, how it convinced me moving from Canon and Leica to Olympus, how it never failed me during the past four years. And up until the middle of 2019, all the episodes you see in this channel, apart from a few vlogs, were made from this very camera. It's a masterpiece of design and functionality. But you may also remember it's the most expensive Michael Fawcett's camera ever released. At $2,000 or £1,800, many questioned about its validity or relevance. People's general reaction was, I can get a full-frame camera for cheaper. Camera X has bigger sensor. Camera Y has more resolution. It's too expensive. And these were the comments, and even some reviewers had doubts about its pricing. Yet, four years on, and now looking back, the M1 Mark II is more relevant than ever. It's a useful piece of technology, capable photographic tool and video, for some. This wasn't because of the price drop over time, it's all because of word of mouth from those who bought it and used it in the field. The result that slowly flooded the scene of social media. And that is exactly what I said. Like a slow cooker, the food in the pot may not look appealing at first, but the longer you leave it, the tastier it gets. And all those flavors just came out and became a master dish. Okay, I know you are going to make jokes on this, but you know what I mean. The status of EM1 Mark II for what it became wasn't how Olympus sold the camera, it's how the product itself convinced its users. Even today, many are still buying the EM1 Mark II, at a good price indeed. I'm not in a position to say how each company should run their business and to market their products. In fact, I want each and every one of them makes great products so all of us users can benefit. But this video is a reminder to us, the arrogant species who believe in no one but ourselves, that of who we were and who we are. Quick judgments, blindly listening to what others say on something without trying never works. Marketing drives sales, but too often we see empty promises that fool the inexperienced who never work in the field to appreciate or even understand the purpose and benefit of each system. Again, I'm not suggesting Olympus or Michael Forsyth as a whole is the best system in the world. No, far from it. But I'm saying that Michael Forsyth has its place in the photographic world. So are other formats. So stop bitching around and call whatever brand you own is the only solution in the world. For any true photographer, a camera is a camera. Nothing more, nothing less. Peace.